Hey, what's going on? It's Quinn David Furness. Welcome to my show. Quinn David Furness presents the Beantown Podcast for Sunday, July 5th, 2020. What's going on? How are you? What's happening? My name is Quinn, and uh, welcome back to the video cast. I hope this works. If it doesn't work, then you'll never have seen it anyways. We had one, one show, one video cast, maybe a month ago. Um, after our initial successful first one, where uh, we we taped a you know video with the podcast and uh, wasn't able to get it to work. Update: We ordered a, an external SD card reader, and that's that's the goal. We're hoping that that works. I tested it out before this; it works great. So I think uh, we'll, we'll be in good shape to get that going. My name is Quinn. This is my show. Thanks for tuning in. Um, welcome to my living room. I decided that we weren't going to try to do the, the audio syncing to, um, to the YouTube file and, or the video file and the reason for that is just because my YouTube audience is such a small audience anyways and I think the camera audio is, is fine. Um, I don't think it's that low quality. I think if you're watching me on YouTube, I think you can hear me just fine. You might be you know, asking yourself why. Why not just do it anyway? It's pretty easy, right? Well, that's where you'd be wrong. Because working on my Mac is like, it's rough, man. It's it's uh, really slow, and the syncing on iMovie is just really hard to do. Um, and it's, more than anything else, it just causes me a lot of stress, okay? And it's my easy breezy summer, right? We're not supposed to have stress. So that's... That's what we're going for. Uh, it's it's Sunday, July 5th, kind of toasty. We're doing this in the middle of the afternoon here. Um, I got my tower fan over this side to my left, um, and I turned it off when we do recordings because it, it's pretty loud. But uh, i tell you what, the, the second we stop recording, that baby comes back on. It's very powerful. For those of you who don't know, I don't have AC in this apartment. There's no central air. Um, everyone else in my, all the other units in my building have, you know, just window units. But um, I'm, I'm good without it, you know. There, there are some days, and we haven't really had it so far this year, but we're, we're getting there. This next week is going to be pretty, pretty warm. Uh, where you feel it, especially this year working from home, because um, that's, you know, that was the biggest thing last year, you know, Monday through Friday or last summer, going to the office, never have to worry about. My apartment being too hot because I'm only home, you know, before 8 a.m. and after 6 p.m. So it's never really an issue. It was just on the weekends when I'd be hanging out at home during the day when it, it would get a little bit hot. Um, now I'm home during the day every day uh, for the most part. So we're going to see this this next week. I think is high 80s all week. Um, it's going to be our first big test. Although I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, I think I might need to invest in a new weather app for my phone so I've just been using the the basic you know Apple weather app that comes with your iPhone it, for years you know ever since I've had an iPhone literally five six years at this point but uh, what I've been noticing recently is that it'll like it'll say you know today for example high of 81 and sunny um, and it's based off of my phone's location so it's not just like generic Chicago which can have a lot of variance that I would understand. No, this is specific to my phone's location. Um, but I mean, by the time we went out and got you know bagels this morning, um, it was like 85 and sunny, and the humidity was really high. Um, we we walked past an, an external thermometer or an outdoor thermometer that had the temp at 91 already by um, you know by about. 10 a.m. and you can feel it. Um, it. It feels that hot, and that was just this morning, so it's now this afternoon. Very sunny. Um, yeah, my phone now is like 89 degrees, and you know earlier today it was like high of 81 today. Well, it's been doing that every day lately. So I've, I guess I've learned to just add an extra like 10 degrees Fahrenheit to whatever it says. Anyways. Uh, this is my show, uh, this is my voice, I am the creator, host, and showrunner of, uh, you know, Quinn David First Presents the Beantown Podcast. Showrunner has always been an interesting term, like, I understand what it means, but why, why, why do some shows have a showrunner and then other shows, you know, just have...
producers, creators, writers, etc. I don't really get it. Uh, listener discretion is advised when you're listening to the Beantown Podcast. Number one, we'll occasionally use some language. And number two, this podcast is objectively terrible. Uh, lots lots going on since we we talked to you last. It's been 10 days since I last recorded a show. Um, I, uh, I went to Door County, Door County, Wisconsin last weekend. Had a little three-day weekend. I took my first vacation day of 2020, which was great. And uh, got away for uh, you know 48 hours. Had some cherries. Had uh, some really good food. A really really good brunch. Stuffed toast and some coffee. Man, that's just that's the tops, isn't it? When you can just go hang out. You got no agenda. You have some good food. Some coffee. I know I know a lot of people for their brunch. It's all about the bottomless mimosas or samosas or s'mores or whatever you want to be bottomless um, and I you know I, I, I it's not like I don't see the merits of a boozy brunch I get it but I don't know there's something really nice about the simplicity of just going hanging out having a good hearty wholesome meal and uh, you know a cup or two of coffee I'm a big coffee fan it took me a long time to get into coffee here, here's our, our listener engagement question of the week, a new segment I started two and a half years into my show. When did you start like seriously drinking coffee as part of your routine? That's an interesting one. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I never had coffee in high school. Like, I don't even I don't even know if I ever like went to a place to drink coffee. I guess occasionally I'd go to a there's a Starbucks kind of by the high school. And, but I don't think I ever even ordered anything, because even back then, you know, 2010, 2011, or whatever, like, Starbucks prices were, were still relatively expensive. Now they're out of control. But, um, I don't, you know, my friends would go, you know, the two friends I had. But um, I don't think I ever really ordered anything from Starbs. And then in college, I remember... Start. I, I had 8.30 a.m. class Monday through Friday, I think my first two years of college, and I only had three years total, so that's 66.7% for those of you scoring at home. Um, and I remember going to like the student center place to get some coffee occasionally, but I think it, w it was more so I'd get like the you know fancy lattes, whatever, that are like 600 calories and basically just milkshakes melted down. Um, and then I think eventually, you know, as I started to work more midnight shifts in college, um, I remember like going, there was another coffee shop on campus that had really bad coffee, but I would occasionally go there. Occasionally go to a gas station. There's a gas station on Fullerton, like right across from uh, where my office was. And you'd always go in there and I, it, it just looked like no one had been there in, you know, five years. It's so interesting that it's, you know, this place right on the main strip of DePaul's campus that like never gets any action, but would be perfect, right? It's got all the snacks you could ever want. It's the same issue that uh, that McDonald's had, you know, the one at Lincoln and Halstead and Fullerton. McDonald's, prime location, right across from the music school, five minute walk from the center of campus. Like, uh, it, you, you'd think that that place would just be huge. Nope, closed down, not enough business. I never understood that. I think it's because all the DePaul kids, or at least the ones who live on campus, minus myself, are pretty rich and like just go to that Whole Foods um, at, at Fullerton and Sheffield, the one that used to be Dominic's. I mean, I, I've never really bought anything there except for the occasional five for fighting, whatever the Friday night tunes are. I'm 16 for a moment, caught in between 10 and 20, and I'm just dreaming. Count the years of my life. What's that guy's name? John and Drasick, something like that. What's he been up to? I don't know. Five for fighting was pretty big for you know a couple years, hundred years. Superman, the Riddle, chances. Could do this all day, um, but yeah. So I, I think I, you know, back to the original point. I think I legitimately started having coffee as part of my routine. 
probably when I started grad school. Um, I think it, you know, up to that point, it, it was like, I'll have coffee here and there, but it's not like, all right, wake up, let's have coffee. Uh, that started to become a thing in grad school. And I, I really went from zero to 60 fast because I would have my morning coffee in my thermos. In fact, I would double fist, I would, uh, excuse me, pack, pack in my backpack when I go up to Northwestern up from Ropo. I had my thermos of coffee, which I still have that thermos. I only really used it like in grad school because I didn't really drink coffee before that and all my jobs I've had since getting my master's, I've just made coffee at the office. I, ha I must have that thermos in my kitchen somewhere, I don't know. I, I don't even know where it is. I, never, I haven't used it in four years. Um, but I make, make coffee in the thermos and I think I must have had, I must have bought the coffee pot I have now which is literally like 20 bucks off of Amazon. Um, very cheap, whatever. I must say I had that in my first Rogers Park apartment back in 2016. Um, and then my other one, I would uh, I would make smoothies, kale smoothies every morning. It'd be like kale, frozen fruit, milk maybe, whey, w h e y whey, anchors away. There's a song parody for you. Could be all about protein shakes and all sorts of nutrients and supplements anchors away. Something to stick a pin in. Um, so I would, yeah, I'd sit, sit at the visitor center, getting paid 17 bucks an hour, killing it, um, which is not, not bad, especially when you're in grad school. Um, and I would drink my coffee, one sip of coffee, one sip of kale smoothie. Mm. You, can never, you can never blend the kale enough to get it to the point where uh, it was really that good, you know? It was kind of rough. Um, but, you know, and, and then I, in addition to that, I would, I was just telling this, or just talking about this earlier today. It's not even a story, it's just a lifestyle. But, um, you know, because I had grad school class Monday through Thursday from 6 to 9 p.m. So I'd finish working at 5, I'd work from 8 to 5, and then go to class from 6 to 9. And I would make, uh, in the, the coffee machine of the break room up at the Northwestern Visitor Center. I had, you know, pre, I had coffee grounds, Folgers, which I don't know why I just, that's what I always had. Cause it was, and I haven't had Folgers since grad school, but I maintain that it is like the worst coffee of all time. Um, really bad, man. And I remember I would, I would make that, put it in my thermos, go to class, and every time I'd open up my thermos in class, it would just smell awful. And I felt really bad, because people would comment on it, be like, oh, my coffee smells like shit. I'd be like, yeah, Folgers, mmm. But it was, it was the type of thing where it's like so bad, so painful that it keeps you going, you know? If I had good quality coffee from somewhere else, it would have put me right to sleep. It would be so tasty. But, um, yeah, so I think when I was, you know, 21, 22 is when I started to have coffee as part of my routine, routine and since then it's just been a, a thing for me. I, I like coffee. But, um, yeah, Door County was very fun, going back to our original, original point. Um, yesterday was the 4th of July. Wow, what a time to be alive. I, I think this the weirdest... Maybe weird is maybe not the right connotation, but just like the most unique 4th of July that I've ever lived through. And, and a lot of this just pertains to, you know, where you're at in life and what you choose to do with your day and with your holiday festivities. But just under, you know, COVID, quarantine, stay-at-home stuff, like, you know, fireworks being canceled, a lot of tension between, like, Residents of Chicago and Chicago leadership, like, beaches are closed, but they're not really enforcing it, and then some days they're trying really hard to enforce it. I don't know, the whole thing is, is kind of a, a shit show. Um, but all that is to say is, I didn't, you know, we didn't do anything yesterday. I mean, there was a, a house party going on, but, you know, I got there at like 4 p.m., 3.30 p.m., did not leave the house after that. Uh, I really didn't hear a bunch of fireworks either. I know they were out there, but you know, 
I didn't do any fireworks. I'm sober still. So, you know, just nothing. I was I was telling my family this morning if it uh, you know, if it was just a normal Saturday and you hadn't told me it was the 4th of July, I would have no idea. I mean, I was riding the bus down and you'd see some people like wearing patriotic stuff, tank tops, I suppose. But otherwise, like just feel like there weren't, weren't any real festivities. It's not like this doesn't make sense, right? It all makes sense. I'm just commenting. But, um, yeah, I ran a, uh, ran a half marathon yesterday morning. I had something I wanted to say, which is why I brought it up. Shoot. I forgot. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Yeah, I'm a fool. Thanks for loving me. To do it perfectly. Adam Lambert. Is he still he's still doing his thing with Queen? Also, like, is it still Adam Lambert and Queen, or Queen and Adam Lambert and Adam Lambert, or is it just Queen and Adam Lambert is you know the singer of Queen now? I don't know. Someone's gonna have to get on that. Uh, Fourth of July memories. There are a couple of stories I could tell. One involves alcohol poisoning, and it wasn't very fun. But the, <laughs> the one I always think back to, <laughs> less, less of like a specific 4th of July memory, but, but kind of surrounding that you know, holiday and relevant to the entire uh, sort of summer, which was the summer after I graduated high school. Um, I, got a, I got a gig. You know, I was pretty, pretty plugged into the Rockford area, Northern Illinois, Southern Wisconsin, piano. Air, or, uh, industry, music industry, symphony orchestra, music scene, whatever you want to call it. We're going blurry here on the camera. Let me try to fix this. I don't know what happened. There, that's better. Um, so I got a gig to, to be the summer pianist for the uh, Beloit Janesville Symphony Orchestra. Wow, what a place. Uh, which I don't think it's called that anymore. It's called like the Rock River Community Orchestra or something. Less exciting. It's a big, big BJSO fan. That's what we'd call it in the, you know, back in the day. BJSO type. Um, I don't remember like who I got the gig from, but I got it. So our first thing on the summer program was a 4th of July slash patriotic themed concert, right? And so it's a bunch of patriotic tunes, Lincoln Portrait by Copeland, Star of the Stripes Forever, you know, some sort of like military march medley, Triple M, we used to call it back in the day. Um, and so we, I, I remember getting the, the gig like really late. It was probably late June like a week before the 4th of July. So I didn't really have a bunch of time to rehearse, but it, it was okay, because the music was easy. But I had to go to a, a one or two rehearsals up in Beloit, up at Beloit College. And it, I remember just it, it being stressful, because I didn't have a smartphone back then. Right, now it's easy. You just plug in the address to your map on your phone. You follow your phone, you go, you're there. Back in the day, back in 2013, is that when I graduated high school? Yeah, 2013. Um, you know, you look at it on the computer before and you hope you, you make it. I remember being really stressful. I was like, not not late to a rehearsal, but I'm just, I'm the type of person that likes to be there, you know, 15 minutes early. I got there like right as we were starting. You know, it's a it's a huge group of people I've never met before, mostly, you know, middle-aged to, to older-age people. Um, you know, a group of people I've never played with before. I don't know anyone in the orchestra, whatever. It's kind of stressful. So we have a rehearsal, yada, yada, yada. But the reason I tell this story is the, uh, the, the point is we actually played two concerts, one on the third, one on the fourth. The third was in Janesville and the fourth was in Beloit because it's the Beloit Janesville Symphony Orchestra. And I think my parents came to the actual 4th of July one in Beloit supporting local arts. Thank you, Mom and Dad. But on the third, when we played in Janesville, if anyone knows the Lincoln Portrait piece by Copeland, it's a... Uh, 
you know, kind of a symphonic poem, but it has a narrator part. And oftentimes they'll get, you know, semi-famous people to do the narration. Well, we were in Janesville, so guess who came to do our narration? And you can find this video on YouTube. In fact, if we get this, this you know, video cast up on YouTube, I'll try to just link it uh, in, the, in the description. Paul Ryan himself, Speaker of the House, came down to uh, Janesville on July 3rd and did, uh, did the Lincoln portrait for us. So you can see there's a fun video on YouTube of us doing Lincoln portrait. He's doing the narration. He's on one side of the stage. I'm sitting there at the piano on the other side of the stage. Hair is just bleached from swim season. Just killing it. Um, yeah, good times. I never, I didn't get to like actually talk to him. Uh, but, you know, what a little twerp. I, I, you know, I wanted to share P90X secrets. I think that would have been cool. But we can't all get ripped like the Speaker of the House. Anyways, our next concert <laughs> was uh, at well, was supposed to be at the Rock County Fair. Rock County, Southern Wisconsin. And I remember it was like a movie themed something. I don't think it was explicitly John Williams themed. I think it was just classic movies in general. You know, we're talking Star Wars. I mean, everything I can think of is John Williams. So maybe it was John Williams. But it was like Star Wars. Oh, that's not true. There are lots of other ones. I don't remember what they were, but they weren't John Williams. Um, but the, the big one was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Which, if you know the, if you know the, the like, symphonic suite for that, it opens with Hedwig's theme, I think is what it's called. Um, which has, like, a big, uh, <clears throat> not marimba, but uh, some, something other part. Clavinova, that's not what it is. Um, Celeste. Celeste? C-E-L-E-S-T-A. So Celesta. Celesta. I don't know how to say it. It's embarrassing as a music major. But uh, it's a painful memory for me. Um, it's a part that you normally have, you know, that specific instrument in an orchestra. But, but us being the local community, low-budget orchestra, I think I made like 20 bucks a pop or something like that. I mean, that's how low-budget this thing was. Um, I, I was supposed to play it on the keyboard, you know, and just change the, press some buttons, change the, the, the voice. I don't think they gave me the score till like days before like a week, a week and a half max, before we were supposed to play at the Rock County Fair. And I remember getting this music and being like, I mean, it's a, it's a really hard piece. I mean, you're talking to 18 year old, good, solid pianist, but you know, I mean, this is really hard. It's the, the thing that goes, ba-dum-ba-dum-bum-bum-bum-bum. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum, bum. That main theme is easy, but then it goes into this crazy arpeggio thing with a whole lot of accidentals, and it's like, you give me a month to do it, I'll, I'll, I'll work it out, but seven to nine days? No, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I remember you know, getting in and emailing the music director and being like, hey, we need to you know, cut this piece or like do it, do it some way different because they're not going to be able to pull this off because you only gave me X amount of days. And I think literally like the next day, I should try to go back into my email, see if I still have this. I got an email from him and it was like, I don't remember exactly what he said, but you're fired basically, which was very kind of them. And I had to do this stupid thing where I drove to this hotel in Rockford to like drop off the music and then he was gonna pick it up later. He wouldn't just meet me you know, wherever to pick it up. I don't know. So I got fired from the Beloit Janesville Symphony Orchestra after two performances with them, two Fourth of July performances with them. And uh, the I irony of the entire situation is they were not able to find a pianist to play their Rock County um, fair set, so they did not perform the Harry Potter piece. Happy Fourth of July. And Paul Ryan, if you're listening, what you been doing, you know? He's on, he's on like faculty at Notre Dame or something. 
Like, what what does he do? Does he drive to South Bend from Janesville, like, twice a week? That seems like a long-ish drive. What is that? Four or five hours? X. Um, let's, let's read some ads here. See what's going on in our world. You guys are lucky for the video cast. I put on a shirt. Normally, 1.30 p.m., in the middle of the day in July... The chances of me wearing a shirt if I'm not on a Zoom meeting for work, literally less than 10%. And you might be asking why, and I'll tell you why not. Why would I want a shirt on? It's just an extra thing to sweat through. Um, but for you guys, I thought you'd appreciate this special treat. Oops, my phone almost fell off the coffee table. If you're watching this video cast, I apologize for my hair. I got back from Rachel's apartment literally about 45 minutes before I started recording. I went grocery shopping. I've not had time to shower yet. In fact, after this ends, I'm going to go uh, go for a little walk and then come back, shower, watch Brickyard. Which, oh man, Jimmy Johnson tied for the most NASCAR championships of all time. Has COVID-19. Would you believe that? ridiculous. Um, him and his wife tested positive, so he's out of the race, which is a damn shame because Brickyard is super entertaining. So I'm going to watch it. It doesn't start for another 90 minutes, which is so late, especially because Indy is an hour ahead. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Do I root for Allgaier driving the 48? Or do I root for like my second favorite driver? I don't even know who it is. Bubba Wallace, maybe? Bowman? TBD, got no one good to root for ever since Biffle left the Cup Series. Okay, um, let's read our ads here. Uh, Home Pride Oregon, oh, here we go, this will be fun. Are you tired of selling your house for less than a quarter of what it's worth, all because you couldn't find a reliable home inspector in time? Well, Oregon listeners, I got good news for you. Home Pride Inspection Services in Bend, Oregon is Central Oregon's hottest new home inspection provider with inspection services including things like heating and cooling, roofing, plumbing, and so much more. Home Pride Oregon is both contractor certified and home inspection certified, so you know you're getting the good stuff. If you're tired of big real estate wrangle hold on the home inspection market and you want a safe certified home inspector that you can trust, you've got to call Steve at 541-410-0316 or you can visit homeprideoregon.com. Again, 541-410-0316 or visit homeprideoregon.com and tell them Quinn sent you for an extra 100% off whichever price is higher. Mm. Something like that. Don't hold me to that. Home Pride Oregon inspection perfection. What did I say? 100% off? That doesn't sound right. Um, I can't stop on this video cast. So I got the lens right here and then I got the screen right here. And I'm so bad at the camera. I'm always looking at the, uh, the video. Because I'm like that uh, nar narcissist, is that his name? The Greek Greek guy? Looked at himself in the, the, the lake for too long or something like that? I don't remember how that works. Narcia. Pan. Pan flute. I don't know. I can't remember all this stuff. Narcissus, is that his name? N-A-R-C-I-S-S-U-S. -S -S Let's go to our research machine here. In case you're wondering, Narcissus. Narcissus and Echo. Narcissus, Greek mythology, there it is. Hey. Old man still got some tricks, huh? In Greek mythology, Narcissus was a hunter from Thessipe in Boeotia, whatever, English please, who is known for his beauty. <laughs> Sounds. Checking off all the boxes so far, according to Tzatziki Sauce, he was a Laconian hunter who loved everything beautiful. Check. Narcissus was proud in that he disdained those who loved him. That's not a check. Causing some to take their own lives to prove their devotion to striking beauty. All right, well, get a hold of yourself. Narcissus is the origin of the term narcissism, a fixation with oneself and one's physical appearance of public perception. 
the more you know. Ba, 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 ba. I should get LeVar Burton to come on this show. He could read Uncle Tom's Cabin or something. It doesn't have to be that book. Something else. Um, I want to give a shout out to the Samson Q2U series. It's got crisp, clean audio quality. It sounds good on minute one. It sounds good on minute 35. You know it. You love it. You got to have it. From Genesis to Exodus, Exodus, not even going to spell it. Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. When God speaks, he uses a Samson. Last one here. I had a friend, um, we'll call her A-Train, because her name starts with an A. In case you, you didn't know how I made that connection. Um, A-Train was telling me about her haircut she got uh, earlier this week, and some sort of kerosene treatment in her hair, too. I don't know how all that, all that stuff works. But she's telling me that it, it sunk her or set her back like $300. Uh, 250 or something like that, which is just silly because, as everyone knows, Cuts by Q <clears throat> charges a flat rate of $15. We'll do, you know, bangs, kerosene treatments, bowl cuts, other cuts. We got steak knives, we got trimmers, we got razors, um, we got coasters. I, I got multivitamins here. I literally, spa treatment, okay? Rogers Park Edition. Why pay $250 for pricey kerosene treatments when you could get a cut rate, flat rate, cut spike queue for $15, okay? Summer sale while supplies last. Get your cut. Maybe we, cut spike queue needs a, a new slogan. We got a song, but maybe we need a slogan. Let's stick a pin in that. Let's read the ad here. Uh, Bob and Weave, we all uh, know the hairstyle, we all love it, but how many Chicago-based independent barbers, that's right, independent, can actually give it to you the way you deserve, and all for only $15 with a steal. Enter Cuts by Q, it's like Enter Sandman, but different. Cuts by Q has been independently owned and operated since 1995, and is probably one of the better barbershop operations serving Chicago, Cook County, Northwest Indiana, and the greater Chicagoland area. From beehives to bangs, faux ox to flat tops, and everything in between, you gotta call Cuts by Q at 815-298-7200, or you can email Cuts by Q at yahoo.com. Again, that's Cuts, Q-U-T-Z, by Q at yahoo.com. All right, sing with us on the live stream. Oh, when you need a fresh do, something snappy and new, just call the experts at Cuts by excuse me Q. All right, welcome to the second half of our program today. It's going to be a very short half because I covered all the things I wanted to talk about in the first half. You might be thinking, well, Quinn, you, you hardly said anything in the first half. That's right. I hope everyone enjoyed last week's Trivia Spectacular. I thought it was kind of fun. I play a lot of trivia, and I think a lot. I think most people know that. Um, and I've been considering trying to run my own game. Not like a weekly thing, just, you know, a one-hit wonder. Um, you know, at some point. And I, I still think I might. I'd have to... Writing, writing the quiz is not the hard part. It's the you know figuring out how you want to do everything technologically. T e c h n o l i g a c a l l y technologically. What is that? Eighteen syllable word? Multisyllabic. Um, I might do it, but I, I I had a fun time last week with the uh, trivia game. And um, if anyone has any questions, comments, complaints about any of the answers, particularly the uh, Sao Paulo one or Tokyo, if you want to dispute any of that, email us at uh, beantownpodcast.yahoo.com. Again, it's beantown, B E A N E, podcast at yahoo.com. I didn't create that question to try to trick you with 
you know, what are you counting as a, as you know city population? The trick the trickery of it was, you know, the fact that eastern and northern are going to be the same, and western and southern are going to be the same. That was the trick aspect. Um, I know if you you know you you Google the populations of like Tokyo versus Shanghai or something or Seoul, you'll get varying um, answers. I just feel, and you again dispute this if you want. I feel like it's it's generally widely considered, you know, standard knowledge that Tokyo is the most populous city in the world. But depending on how you measure things, it might not be the case. TBD. Um, yeah, I don't know. Fourth of July, hanging out. Nothing too much going on, man. I'm gonna go out for a walk. Get a little sun. I, I went to uh, I went to the lake on Friday. Not the beach, mind you, because I'm a good uh, public citizen. Just some green space by the lake. Yeah, and got some sun. Got the, got a little back burn going, which was surprising um, because I think I, I think I know what happened. I I did a full lather, lather, L A T H E R of sunscreen, front, back, up, down, tangentially, Sokotoa, we, whatever, all the angles. You know what I'm saying, um, and my chest didn't get really burned at all. My back did. So I was trying to figure out what happened because I spent more time on my back with my chest facing the sun than I did you know, flipped around. I think what happened, I think I have a low quality sunscreen. You know what happened was when I went to lie out in the sun on my, on my blanket, my Archmere Academy blanket out there in Wilmington, Delaware, I think I, when I was sweating you know, my buns off lying on my back because I'm staring right at the sun. I think what happened was I sweat, sweated, swat, I swat a bunch and probably the sunscreen kind of came off. So that when I turned over, like you would do to burgers on a grill, I think my back was, was particularly exposed. What I don't understand here, <laughs> this makes no sense, I've got, um, you, imagine you throw on a backpack, so you know where the straps are kind of on your chest, you know, just to the outside of your, your kind of pecs there. Um, I have sunburn like where those straps are, which doesn't make any sense. I was, I mean, I was walking around with my backpack. When I first, you know, took off my backpack when I got home, I looked in the mirror and I, I saw that it was, you know, particularly red where the straps are. I was like, well, I'm just, it's just from walking with my backpack for the last 20 minutes. Um, but then I woke up yesterday morning and the, the redness was still there in that very specific pattern. I don't understand. My backpack straps are somehow absorbing the sunlight in, you know, like a prism, hyper-focusing the light onto those pores or something. I don't know. I'm not the dermatologist here. Any dermatologists out there, email us. I already gave you the email like four minutes ago. Okay, pay attention. Otherwise, that's you know what that's that's what I got for you. Um, we are going to uh, you know try a zero dark thirty mission here. When I tried it right before we started, the external SD reader worked like a charm. We're going to try that again. I think the most frustrating part of the process for me, and I understand why it does this. Whatever, I don't care. Is that you know. It split the SD card splits up your your um, MP4 files into a, a bunch of different little ones, and so it's hard to keep track. Like, are they in the right order? I don't know. There's no way to mark it. They're each like five minutes long. So again, we're not doing any audio syncing because I trust that the audio you're getting from my Lumix G3X series, whatever that I bought from friend of the podcast Matt Feather a couple months ago. Um, I think it's going to be just fine, okay? And if you're if you if you made it 39 minutes and 40 seconds into this YouTube stream and you're like this audio is just not cutting it for me, I'm going to start over. Go check us out. SoundCloud Player FM, not Castbox yet, still working on that. Um, 
Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. We're on the App Store and we're streaming live across all Beantown networks. Okay? You can find the high, crisp, clear audio quality there. Okay? Um, that's what I have for you. Everyone, I hope you're having a safe, fun week. It's pretty hot across the U.S., so stay hydrated. And, um, yeah, we're in the thick of summer. Although, uh, orientation for my law school, I'm not in law school. I work for law school. We start in a month and 12 days. Boy, that's coming up. Okay, that's what we had for you. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, you know how to get in touch with us if you want. Uh, follow us on Twitter. We are at BeantownCast. My personal Twitter is at White Buns. And like us, subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. Because, uh, you know, according to Uncle Andy of Jack Link's fame, once we hit 1 billion subscribers across all of our platforms, uh, we've got a lucrative sponsorship deal waiting for us. I'm not getting paid in cash, just jerky. But I need the protein. All right, that's what I got for you. Thanks if you're watching this on the video. It worked. That's awesome. And, um, yeah, enjoy your holiday weekend. Stay hydrated. Stay safe. Stay safe. It's not a word. Stay sane. And I'll check in on you next time. How do I turn this thing off? Yikes.